It's June 2nd, 2020, and nothing's changed. Um, I don't know, welcome to those of you who just got here. And I don't mean that sarcastically, I mean that seriously. Like, for those of you who heard about Ferguson in the news in 2014, we're like, yeah, okay, whatever. Who heard about Baton Rouge in 2016, we're like, yeah, okay, whatever. Heard about Philando Castile in, I think that was 2017, and we're like, man, that's sad. And it took you till George Floyd to get here. And I hope that's a name you remember for the rest of your life. Um, there is no reason for anyone to die in the custody of the police when they have actively surrendered themselves. And honestly, even when they haven't, like, there are so many situations where someone asks questions and they're resisting arrest and they end up dead. Or, like Sandra Bland, they end up in police custody, go to jail, and wind up dead by suicide. I can't really tell you how to stop it because how do you stop an organization that was created to chase down slaves who are running for their freedom? How do you stop that when it's happened over and over and over and over for generations? I don't know how you stop that. But what I do know is that you can't sit there anymore. You can't sit on your couch and start the office for the 47th time and watch Diversity Day while all this shit is going on outside. You, you just can't. You can't. You can't do it anymore. And if you're going to, don't you dare lie to yourself and call yourself an ally. Just don't do it. And I don't think everyone's space is to be on the front lines protesting. Because if we're all out there protesting and getting arrested, who's putting pressure on the politicians? Who's putting pressure on the chief of police? Who's calling lawyers to bail people out for misdemeanors that they're getting sent to jail for. But I do think, you know, posting on social media is not enough. Putting up a little black square for Blackout Tuesday, it's just not enough. So find those ways to impact the people around you every day. If you have family members who are openly racist, talk about it with them. But also, don't be afraid to just leave. There are some people who you're not going to be able to get through to. That's something I've learned time and time again. I learned it the first time when I was five and a girl called me a nigger in kindergarten. And, you know, you just learn that lesson really easily. There are some people you just can't get through to. So you leave them. Maybe not permanently, but in that moment, you know, when you're sitting there and your dad's being an ass and is talking about how black people aren't worth anything, leave walk out of the house, go drive home, go stay with a friend. Don't tolerate it. Just don't tolerate it. Um, I've had a lot of conversations this week about people with children who are trying to find the right balance of honesty while not giving their kids nightmares. And I wish I could say that black kids are afforded the same thing and we're, we're just not. Um, does that mean I'm asking you to traumatize your non-black children? No. But if we've learned anything from people's incessant need to put their children on the internet and on TikTok and on Instagram, it's that kids are a lot smarter than us most of the time. A lot of your kids probably know something's going on. They know mommy and daddy are sad. They know something's happening. Just talk to them about that. And I would say let that conversation be guided by their questions. If your kids are old enough to ask questions after you say people are upset because a police officer killed a man. If your kids are old enough, and by old enough I mean, you know, probably kindergarten age, honestly. Like kindergartners and first graders. Oh my god, Frankie, I'm sorry my dog is losing her mind. 
kindergartners and first graders ask some very insightful questions. Honestly, it's frightening, and honestly, our kids would probably be so much smarter without us <laughs> dampening their abilities, but, um, you know, let them lead that conversation and let their questions lead the conversation because your kids aren't too young to understand that if they're playing outside with their black friend, that they're going to get treated differently than your own kids are. And that's okay for them to know. It's fully okay. You know, I think of Tamir Rice who was playing in the park, park and I think he was playing like cops and robbers or something with like a water gun. And he died because the police claimed he met the description of a suspect, even though he was like an 11 year old boy and thought he had a real gun. I don't know how a toy looks like a real gun, but apparently it looks like a real gun. And instead of approaching and trying to figure out, is it actually a real gun or not? And de-escalating, they murdered that child and he never got to grow up. And his parents deal with Christmases and birthdays and Monday Mondays when you're yelling at your kid to get in the bathtub they are missing all of that because of a quick draw and I think it's unfair for your kids to go through life thinking that stuff doesn't happen so talk to them about that but also talk to them about other ways in which they may perpetuate whiteness as the right way um You'll often see that with kids when they're discovering what makes them different or what makes someone else different from them. You know, um, I know uh, natural hair is a very big conversation. Um, if you were to Google cute kids right now on Google Images, I bet you it would take you a few scrolls to get to a black child that did not look mixed race. Like it probably would take you a while. In fact, let's try that out right now. I'm gonna grab my phone. Go into Google, and I'm going to search just cute kids, no disclaimers, no nothing, just cute kids. When I go into my images, I'm not going to count the top because there is a, a tag option, I don't know if you guys can see that for brown, so we're just going to go through the normal one. Like just the feed that comes up. And so far, that's one, two, oh, three. And hey, there's two on the same page. I think that's the same kid, but so three scrolls. And that may seem to you like a really small thing. And if our world wasn't the way it was, it probably would be a very small thing, but it's not. In the same way that if your kids are asked to draw pictures of their families in class and they're sitting around the table with kids darker than them and the kid asks them, hey, can you hand me the skin color crayon? What color crayon are they gonna hand them? Is it gonna be the peach one? Is it gonna be like the chocolate brown one? The regular tan? What do you think your kid would just naturally wanna hand them? I think that speaks a lot. Um, you know, I talk to teachers sometimes about even just keeping things like band-aids that come in different skin tone shades in their, um, you know, first aid kits. Kids recognize when things are different for them. They recognize when their band-aid blends in to their skin and not their friends. They recognize that, you know, it takes you two minutes to put their hair in a ponytail, but their friend says their mommy spends an hour on their hair. They recognize that they're different. And instead of that, instead of you letting the world dictate what different means to them, teach them, celebrate differences with them, explain that people's households look different, that their morning routines may be different. You know, especially now that uh, we're in quarantine and most of y'all, your kids are on Zoom calls for class. You're getting to probably see some of the insides of kids' homes that you haven't seen before. Um, you know, celebrate those things with them. Um, I don't know. I've kind of lost things to say. I am so tired. 
honestly. I've had so many conversations with so many of you. And although they have been fruitful and they've been important, I literally feel like I haven't slept in days, even though I sleep like a rock every night because I'm just so exhausted. And I'm tired of turning on the news and seeing that protests went from peaceful to violent, only to find out that they were not violent at all and that white supremacist gangs or the police themselves caused the violence. Like in Dallas last night, Renee Hall said, if you're out protesting after 7 p.m. in the quarantine zone, we will arrest you. So what did they do? People were out protesting outside of the quarantine, or not the quarantine zone, sorry, outside of the um, curfew zone, and police boxed them in. If you've never been to Dallas, there are plenty of one-way streets. They box them down some one-way streets, force them onto um, this bridge, which I'll insert a picture here. It's very intricate. And they force these people onto this bridge. And as they were entering one side, they saw the police. And so they wanted to turn around and go the other way because they just knew. The police are sitting blocking your exit on the other end. You're not going to be in for a good time. The Dallas police have a history of uh, not making it a good time. And so they went to turn around only to find that there were police on that end too and they were boxed in. The problem was is that the people who turned around to run back ran into people who had no idea what was going on, and they literally trampled people. Fortunately, from what I've seen, no one's died. Um, I've seen reports of injuries and things, but I haven't seen anyone die, thank God. But they literally boxed these people in, and then for what I'm sure seems like hours to them, I think it was only 30 to 40 minutes, which is still this incredibly long time to be terrified. They threw tear gas into the crowd um, and rubber bullets, um, I've heard that there were flashbangs, but I didn't see any video of that. I only saw the tear gas. Um, and literally just into this crowd of people, no regards for their safety, didn't look at them as people, and just ambushed them. None of these people had assaulted the police. I mean, I'm sure people have said things, but I mean, you're a police officer. I'm sure people say shit to you every day. They took that opportunity on themselves to box those people in an attempt to take power back. They don't realize is what they did instead was create reason for more people to go out and for more people to walk because this exact response is why we're out here. Your need to have a violent physical response to people who were arguing against your violence in your everyday job makes no sense. That's not how you respond. It's just not how you respond. If you don't like the way people are responding, meet with those community leaders. Hell, half of y'all don't even live in the communities you're currently marching in in your riot gear. You don't know how they feel. You don't know what's going on. Talk to them. What is the point of creating violence? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. So that's why I'm going to leave this right now. I think I'm going to do some more of these later in the week as other things come up. As people ask questions. But I'll just leave it with that. Challenge your friends and family. Keep talking. And you know what? Please stop asking black people how we're doing. I know you're doing it to be kind. You're doing it to check in your friends. And yes, while that is important in general circumstances, no one's doing good right now. Like, we're all fucked up. We are all fucked up. So just, just don't do it right now. You want to send, like... You know, a cash app, a Starbucks card. It's like, hey, thinking of you, get a coffee, get a pizza, take care of yourself, do that. I will also say if you're asking questions like that and they don't respond to you, do not get offended. This honestly is the equivalent of finding out that someone's parent died and then you text them immediately after like, oh my God, sorry, your mom died. Are you okay? Can I do anything for you? No, my mom fucking died. I don't know what I need right now. I, I need to cry. This is what it feels like to know. That every day when you leave your house, you may not come home. If you do come home, are you injured? Can you go back to work? Are you safe? Is your family safe? These are all questions we ask ourselves. And until we don't have to do that, this is going to keep happening.